Welcome to Passioneer Magazine, the podcast where you hear inspirational stories, encouraging news, and in depth interviews with authors, influencers, CEOs, and thought leaders. Passioneer Magazine, the podcast. Bold ideas, brave pursuits, boundless inspiration. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today. My guest is Dom Farnan, and we are really excited to have her with us today. Um, I can't wait to pick her brain about all of the information that she has stored away along her success journey. So without Further ado, let's go on and get started. Hello, Dom. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. Now, you are a woman that has worn several hats in your life, and you have worn them quite successfully. So before we get started, there may be some folks out there that are unfamiliar with you, Dom, and and who you are and what you do. Yeah, amazing. Um, I like to call myself a humble student of the world. So I'm always learning new things about uh, myself, the communities that I'm in, life in general. I love to be a student. Um, In my professional career, I started recruiting when I was 17 and built up a solo consulting practice until about 2019 when I built a team around how I um, serviced clients. And so Last few years, I grew that business. And then um, actually after last year, 2023, I decided to go back to being solo. So I'm building a coaching app and practice. I do speaking engagements. I wrote a book last year, contributed to this other book. um, And now I'm just, you know, recruiting again myself as I rethink and reimagine, you know, what I'm going to do beyond this year and in the short and long term future. Mm-hmm. I love how, even though we may have a basic outline of, of what we wish to do with our lives, um, life always has a way of introducing some additional new or different uh, mm-hmm. options for us. And I, I love it. It kind of keeps us um, a little spontaneous in some of the decisions that we have to make, because by and large, I I think that we like to plan a lot of things as much as we can, but I I love those little bits of, huh, there's an option. I wonder what I will do. Mm -hmm. So I I love that, that you were, um, that you flow with that as well. Now, when you were a, a little kid, what did you think you were going to be when you grew up? I loved investigating and researching and teaching. So I was kind of split between being a journalist or like a news anchor. I wanted to be on TV, I think, and also being a teacher. I used to play school and it was my favorite thing to do outside of school. And it wasn't really that fun for all my friends, but (laughs) I often invited them over to uh, play school and have me be the teacher. And so I don't know. I think that was always some resonation with me. Absolutely. Trying to share that knowledge and and encourage others, even as a kid. I love it. I love it. Now, what made you decide to do what you are doing now? And you can you can choose how um, you want to answer that. But how did you make the definitive uh, decision? I am going to do this business or I am going to do it in this particular way. Yeah, I would say, you know, when I was 17, I didn't have much of a choice. I wanted to have a quote unquote real job. And at the time, after I graduated high school early, that meant to me to go work in an office. So I had a neighbor that worked at an office and then I worked with him as an intern. And when that internship was up, they sent me to HR, who then kind of directed me and invited me to start learning how to recruit. So I stumbled upon it. And it became what I was interested in. It kind of uh, helped me to stick with being an investigator and connecting with people and whatnot. But, you know, through 20 years of doing that, at the end of 2018, I felt a bit burnt out. I felt a bit tired and there just wasn't enough time in the day to keep up with the volume of work I had. So I decided to almost package up and um, 
begin to teach people how to recruit. And so I began, you know, recruiting friends and family and anyone who wanted to learn uh, my profession and brought them into my team and I built a company around it. And then I moved, you know, the nine clients that I had solo into my teams of recruiters supporting all of the work. And at the time, if you remember 2018, 19, until mid 2020, like there was a lot of hiring happening and then, you know, Mm -hmm. tapered off a bit in COVID and then began to hire crazy busy again for the last, last few years. And 2023 really slowed down and continues to be a little bit slower. So that's ha- having me pivot a bit and look into coaching and um, different types of leadership development and conscious culture building within companies. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, I-, I love how you are teaching others uh, how to do what you do, how to be successful in, in that lane. So if someone says, Hmm, that's interesting. They, their ears have perked up a little bit. Is there a particular person that you feel or type of person or someone in a particular industry that you feel that you can help the most? Who is it? That's the best person to step into those shoes. Yeah. I would say from a client standpoint for companies that are looking to hire, who we serve best are people who are really open-minded, who want help, who don't think that they know it all and who (laughs) um, know that, you know, recruiting is an art and a science and they don't necessarily want to do it themselves. They, you know, are aware that it, it, it's done well with the right level of um, team and support and people who actually have lived in it and specialize in it. So it doesn't really matter what industry, you know, through my solopreneur career, I worked for 400 and something companies, all shapes, sizes, industries, startups, enterprise, you name it, I probably worked on it. And I think that's what contributed to, to um, my, my success and my team success is just my ability to get into industries that I know nothing about learn them very quickly and make an impact. And so, you know, the companies who who want almost like this secret stealth, amazing type <laughs> of recruiting experience, that those are the people who would resonate really well with us. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I find that people have a tendency to find exactly who they're looking for. When when you know that you're looking for a particular type of service, um, you, you know who you don't want because you know who you do want. So I, I love that you are able to really fit with that type of client. So I, I love that. Now, what advice would the person that you are today give to the person you were when you first started? Mm, Good question. I would say stay open and curious and Mm -hmm. don't take on other people's stuff. Um, As an early career recruiter, I, because I was so young in my career and I looked young and I worked often in heavy male dominated industries, as many of us women do, um, I felt like I had a lot to prove and I was constantly, um, seeking validation from the clients that I work with. And, you know, if something didn't go right, or I made a mistake or something happened with the recruiting process, or there were issues, I often would take that on. Or if I had clients that, you know, they were having their own issue or whatever the situation was, I would take that on as well. So I carried a lot of other people's stuff for a very long time. I think that's kind of what led me to my burnout in 2018 was Mm -hmm. I I really um, took everything seriously. And um, I would just say to my younger self, you know, know what's yours and know what's not yours. Stay open and curious and, and don't let the challenges and the lessons that you have to learn, um, dim your light. Yeah. Good advice. Definitely good advice, especially that taking on, um, what, what isn't yours, you know, uh, my, my counselor ears perked up when you said that, because I share that with that 
side of what I do as well. Um, only, only deal with the portion that is yours. And I think that comes with years of experience, wisdom, with having a mentor that can pass that on. You know, uh, it's your slice of the pie. Deal with just your slice of the pie. The other will definitely burn you out. And I, I think as a young person, we think that, well, if I wasn't supposed to do it, then this person wouldn't allow me to do it. Not realizing that that person is just handing you more work so that they don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, you are, you're definitely giving nuggets of wisdom there. Now, as an organization starts to grow larger or as a solopreneur becomes more popular, there can be a tendency for some of that passion, some of that fire to dampen because there's a lot going on. How did you keep this from happening uh, with your businesses? Yeah, I think for me, um, my passion for people and recruiting ebbed and flowed. Like there was definitely times in my career where it peaked. And I think earlier in my career, as I was you know, climbing the ladder or proving myself or, or gaining more traction, um, I was all about work and I was all about what was propelling me forward and that world. But I found myself um, over time, my passion, not necessarily waning for recruiting, but evolving into leadership and, and thinking through how am I going to support my team and what do they need and what do, do I wish I learned earlier on and really documenting my experience and lessons learned and challenges I overcame Mm -hmm. so that they could fast track and they didn't necessarily have to go through the slog or go through and earn their stripes the way that I had to as an earlier career uh, recruiter. And so I think for me, I found a different, not necessarily different passion, but just a different thing to light me up in different seasons of my career. And so now, you know, I'm coming back to being solopreneur after having run a big company for the last few years. And I'm getting excited. I mean, I think I just posted this today on LinkedIn. I'm getting excited again about being in this recruiter seat um, and not taking it so seriously, knowing that I have nothing to prove. And I know that I'm good yeah. at what I do and coming from a place of uh, full conviction and confidence and belief um, that is stable and grounded. And so I think I just, you know, have, have navigated being able to be open and, um, following different passions, different seasons of your career, different things are important. And so really just kind of being open in that way. Mm -hmm. I like how you said that there is a confidence in not having anything to prove. Like you, you have accomplished, you have achieved those things that were important for you, to you, for the business, for the brand. And now you're able to uh, relax in in that achievement relax in that confidence and move forward now does it mean that you're not still on top of your game uh, and sometimes i think people confuse that and think that once you are able to operate from that point of view that you don't that you're not as involved or you're not as excited and that's not what you're saying you're saying that i am now at a different phase a different stage and i am able to operate from that sense of confidence and move forward i love that i i, I definitely love that and especially for women because i think that we don't hear that it is okay for us to be um, excited and confident in the stage in which we are operating from so i love that you mentioned that now, I want to kind of circle back around to something you said earlier, and that is that you are also an author. You have written a book yourself, and you've also collaborated uh, with another project. Can you tell us a little bit about that process? What was it like to write your own book and flip side of the coin to be a collaborator on a, a book project? Yeah, to write my own book was a journey. It was a uh something that I had an idea about in COVID and I went through um, a program called Alt MBA, best 31 day experience ever. Still, it still exists. It's a really beautiful experience. And it was really nice in COVID because I feel like it restored my faith in humanity. I met so many amazing global people um, together during that month time, but 
in that program, you write a lot. And so after that wrapped up, one of the coaches had connected with me and said, your writing's really good. Have you ever thought about writing a book? And I said, oh, mm -hmm. oh maybe, <laughs> like not really, but kind of. <laughs> and he's like, I think you should. And I invite you to do it. And I'm like, okay. So, you know, I started writing my book and then I, I didn't finish. And then in 2020, when was it? 2022. Yeah. February, 2022, I was in a mastermind where as part of the nine month experience, we had to quote unquote, ship a creative project by the end of it. So at the end of my experience, I committed to my cohort of eight people. I would ship my book and write it and be out in the world. And so that's what I did. And so, um, I spent nine months really diving deep into the story that I wanted to tell. And so it's a bit of um, a memoir-ish, but it's really, really concentrated in the last three years, four years of my life, from a burnout to breakthrough to my company growing to, you know, the season that I'm, I'm at in my life now. So my book came out last March. It's called Now Here, A Journey from Toxic Boss to Conscious Connector. It's very mm -hmm. self-reflective and honest. And then, um, you know, I feel like it was just a really beautiful experience for me. I mean, I would even say reading it for Audible and recording that was a whole other journey when you sit with yourself and read your book over eight hours, you know, over mm -hmm. a couple of days and like have that reflection of your own growth is a really beautiful thing. Um, and then collaborating on a book that's coming out in March called Emerge with Self Love, that is also a beautiful experience. So a woman that I know from Instagram, Paula, reached out to me and asked if I wanted to contribute and write a chapter about my own personal journey with self-love. And so I did that and I really enjoy that. I think that's a fun way to continue to write and contribute to different projects that are interesting to you. Absolutely. And, and I'm so glad that you did both of those things that you are sharing from one aspect to to the other and uh, i i applaud people that are willing to share their stories just those bits and pieces that help encourage others to continue to to walk forward so along that same vein let me let me ask you this question what are one or two or three things that you do in your daily life that have absolutely contributed to a better life for you? You can answer from a personal perspective or from business, however you choose. Yeah, I would say I have a morning devotional practice that has evolved over the last four years and it includes prayer, journaling. My journaling has different prompts. So it often starts with a check in physically, how am I feeling in my body, intention setting, gratitude, um, visualizations, literal ask what I'm asking for support from. Um, and at the end of the day, a reflection on all of those things. And that's been really beautiful. I do some reading. I recently moved back into my house in New Jersey. So I have some space. I have my sound bowls that I play most mornings. I give myself a sound healing. That has been so, so beautiful. That's a new kind of thing I plugged into my devotional. And it's been, you know, it's been evolving. When I first started giving myself any time in the morning, I had a lot of, um, I had negative self-talk and I had like, you don't have the time for this. This you're too busy. You're too this, you're too that. I had all this inner critic just managing. And so as my journey with self-love evolved, my morning devotional moved from being disciplined and a to-do list to really being a devotional time for myself where I can connect with me first before I pour into other people. And I do that because I love myself and because I'm worth it, not because of any other reason. And so that's taken me really about four years to get to that place of um, feeling that level of love for myself. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is absolutely wonderful, uh, especially having time with the bowls in the morning. Uh, that is uh, just a beautiful thing. It it brings on a sense of calm that you may not get 
at any other time of Mm -hmm. of the day it just so just envelops you that is i'm so glad that you that you are are doing that as you can see i'm a fan Mm -hmm. so (laughs) so uh if anyone takes anything away that that for the self-love and the self-care definitely definitely do that now my last question for you is you are doing amazing things dom and you are definitely being a woman that is empowering others along the way but i want to give you an opportunity to to speak on or speak up about a particular thing if you so like and that is how do you use your voice to empower others what are you looking forward to to speaking on in the future yeah i'm looking forward to continuing to share the story that you know that's in my book and um my intention with that is to plant seeds for others to take action on their own inner work and healing i wrote about it recently you know some of the worst advice i ever got was that i couldn't change someone had told me like i would never change or you know you just are the way you are and so if you're miserable that's this or that and for me i always challenged that notion and you know my invitation and way to empower others is for them to look in the mirror and uh be willing to get curious about who they be and their you know the depths of their soul's essence and and start exploring that and uh it it's not for everybody you have to be brave because you're going to see a lot of stuff that you may not want to see and you're going to have to be able to come to acceptance but through acceptance there is peace on the other side of all of this through forgiveness and acceptance there is peace and so that's that's what i hope to continue to share and create space for in the world i love it i love it Don Fernand, thank you so much for spending time with us here on Passioneer Magazine, the podcast. Now, before I let you go, I'm sure folks want to reach out to you. If someone wants to follow you on socials, if they want to reach out or work with you, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, on Instagram, you can follow me at I am Dom Farnan, um, F-A-R-N-A-N. And then my website is domfarnan.com. You can also find me on LinkedIn at Don Farnan if that is your thing. I love it. Thank you again for being a guest today. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to Passioneer Magazine, the podcast.